What is the most important reason for doing a vehicle inspection? Safety is the most important reason you inspect your vehicle. Safety for yourself and for other road users. What things should you check during a trip? You should check instruments, air pressure gauge if you have air brakes, temperature and pressure gauges, ammeter and voltmeter, mirrors, tires, cargo, cargo covers, and lights. If you see, hear, smell, or feel anything that might mean trouble, check it out. Name some key steering system parts. Steering wheel, steering shaft, gearbox, hydraulic fluid reservoir, power steering cylinder, tie rod, steering arm, pitman arm, drag link, steering knuckle and spindle. Name some suspension system defects. Missing or broken leaves in any leaf spring. If one fourth or more are missing, it will put the vehicle in out of service, but any defect could be dangerous. Broken leaves in a multi-leaf spring or leaves that have been shifted so they might hit the tire or other parts. Leaking shock absorbers torque rod or arm, U-bolts, spring hangers, or other axle positioning parts that are cracked, damaged, or missing, air suspension systems that are damaged or leaking, any loose, cracked, broken, or missing frame members. What three kinds of emergency equipment must you have fire extinguisher spare electrical fuses unless equipped with circuit breakers warning devices for parked vehicles for example three reflective warning triangles or six fuses or three liquid burning flares Optional items may include chains, where winter conditions require them, tire changing equipment, list of emergency phone numbers, and an accident reporting kit or packet. What is the minimum tread depth for front tires for other tires? You need at least 4 32nd inch tread depth in every groove on front tires. You need 2 32nd inch on other tires. Name some things you should check on the front of your vehicle during the walk around inspection. Door and passenger door glass should be clean. Door latches or locks should work properly. Continued. Condition of wheels and rims. Missing, bent, broken studs, clamps, lugs, or any signs of misalignment. Condition of tires, properly inflated, valve stem and cap, okay, no serious cuts, bulges, or tread wear. Use wrench to test rust streaked lug nuts, indicating looseness. Hub oil level, okay, no leaks. Continued. Condition of spring. This is for the front suspension. Spring hangers, shackles, U-bolts, 
shock absorber condition. Continued. Front brakes. Condition of brake drums or discs. Brake pad has at least one quarter inch of material. Condition of brake shoe. Condition of hoses. Continued. Con uh, front. Condition of front axle. Condition of steering system. No loose, worn, bent, damaged, or missing parts. Must grab steering mechanism to test for looseness. Continued. Condition of windshield. Check for damage and clean if dirty. Check windshield wiper arms for proper spring tension. Check wiper blades for damage, stiff rubber, and securement. Continued. Lights and reflectors. Parking, clearance, and identification lights clean, operating, and proper color. Amber at front. Reflectors clean and proper color. Amber at front. Front turn signal lights clean, operating, and proper color. Amber or white on signal facing forward. What should wheel bearing seals be checked for? To make sure that they are not cut, damaged, or loose and visually see that they are not leaking fluid. How many red reflective triangles should you carry? A commercial driver must carry three reflective triangles in his truck at all times. How do you test hydraulic brakes for leaks? Pump the brake pedal three times then apply firm pressure to the pedal and hold it for five seconds. The pedal should not move. If it does, there might be a leak or other problems. Why put the starter switch key in your pocket during the vehicle inspection? The driver should keep the starter key on his person while performing the pre-trip inspection so that no one can start the engine while the vehicle inspection is being performed. Why should you back toward the driver's side? So you can see better. Backing toward the right side is very dangerous because you can't see as well. If stopped on a hill, how can you start moving without rolling back? For manual transmission, partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off of the brake or put the parking brake on whenever necessary to keep you from rolling back. On a tractor trailer equipped with a trailer handbrake valve, the hand valve can be applied to keep from rolling back. When backing, why is it important to use a helper? There are blind spots that you can't see. What's the most important hand signal that you and the helper should agree on? Stop. What are two special conditions where you should downshift? 
before entering the curve, before starting down a hill. When should you downshift automatic transmissions? You can select a low range to get greater engine braking when going down downgrades. Also pay attention. Some vehicles have automatic transmissions. You can select a low range to get greater engine braking when going down grades. The lower range prevents the transmission from shifting up beyond the selected gear unless the governor RPM is exceeded. It is very important to use this braking effect when going downgrade. Retarders keep you from skidding when the road is slippery. True or false? False. Retarders help slow a vehicle, reducing the need for using your brakes. When you drive, wheels have poor traction. The retarders may cause them to skid. Therefore, you should turn the retard pardon me, you should turn the retarders off whenever the road is wet, icy, or snow covered. What are two ways to know when to shift? Use engine speed. Watch your tachometer and shift up when the engine reaches the top of the range for your engine. How far ahead does the manual say you should look? The manual indicates that you should look 12 to 15 seconds ahead, which means that this is the distance you would travel in 12 to 15 seconds. At a slower speed, that would be about a block. At highway speeds, it's about a quarter of a mile. What are two main things to look for ahead? Look for traffic vehicles coming onto the highway into your lane or turning watch for brake lights from slowing vehicles look for road conditions look for hills and curves anything you'll have to slow or change lanes for hey, pay attention to traffic signals and signs watch for stale green lights that may change before you get there what's your most important way to see the sides and rear of your vehicle. Mirrors. Mirrors help you see the sides and rear of your vehicle. What does communicating mean in safe driving? It means signaling your intentions. Where should you place reflectors when stopped on a divided highway? All to the rear of the vehicle, at 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet, towards the approaching traffic. Traffic is approaching your vehicle from the rear. This rule also applies for one-way streets. What are three things, pardon me, what three things add up to total stopping distance? 1. Perception distance, 2. Reaction distance, and 3. Braking distance. If you go twice as fast, your stopping distance increases by 2 or 4 times. Answer, 4 times. The preceding answer is true for speeds from 20 to 40 miles per hour. Stopping distance under the paragraph heading. The effects of speed on stopping distance, which states 
when you double your speed from 20 to 40 miles per hour, the impact is four times greater. The braking distance is also four times longer. Keep in mind, the greater the speed, the greater the effect. Empty trucks have the best braking, true or false? False. Empty trucks require greater stopping distance because an empty vehicle has less traction. It can bounce and lock up its wheels, giving much poorer braking. Stopping distance under the paragraph heading, the effect of vehicle weight on stopping distance, which states, empty trucks require greater stopping distance because an empty vehicle has less traction. The reason for that is because empty trucks don't have as much weight on the tires as loaded trucks have on them. For trucks, more weight, within reason, on the tires equals better traction. What is hydroplaning? Hydroplaning, which is comparable to your tires water skiing, happens when the tires lose their contact with the road and have little or no traction. You can regain control by releasing the accelerator and pushing in the clutch. What is black ice? Black ice is a thin layer that is clear enough that you can see the road underneath it. It makes the road look wet. At any time the temperature is below freezing and the road looks wet, watch out for black ice. How do you find out how many seconds of following distance space you have? Wait until the vehicle ahead passes and count off the seconds like this. 1,001, 1,002, and so on until you reach the same spot. Keep at least 4 seconds for 40 foot truck and 5 seconds if you are going over 40 miles per hour. If you are driving a 30 foot vehicle at 55 miles per hour, how many seconds of following distance should you allow? Allow at least four seconds. You should decrease your following distance if somebody is following too closely. True or false? False. Increase your following distance. Opening up room in front of you will help you to avoid having to make sudden speed or direction changes. It also makes it easier for the tailgater to get around you. If you swing wide to the left before turning right, another driver may try to pass you on the right. True or false? True. What is a hazard? A hazard is any road condition or other road user, driver, bicyclist, pedestrian, that is a possible danger. Why make emergency plans when you see a hazard? Being prepared will reduce the danger. Always have a plan. You look for the hazards in order to have time to plan a way out of any emergency. When you see a hazard, think about the emergencies that could develop and figure out what you would do. Always be prepared to take action based on your plans. What are some tips to follow so you won't become a distracted driver? Turn off all communication devices. Do not text 
or read text messages while driving. Familiarize yourself with your vehicle's features, equipment, and before you get behind the wheel, adjust all vehicle controls and mirrors to your preference prior to driving. Pre-program radio stations and preload your favorite CDs. Clear the vehicle of any unnecessary objects and secure cargo, etc. How do you use in-vehicle communications equipment cautiously? Assessing all potential in-vehicle distractions before driving, developing a preventive plan to reduce or eliminate possible distractions, expecting distractions to occur, and discussing possible scenarios before getting behind the wheel. How do you recognize a distracted driver? Vehicles may drift over the lane divider lines or within their own lanes. Cars traveling at inconsistent speeds. Drivers preoccupied with maps, food, and cigarettes. Cell phones or other objects. Drivers who appear to be involved in conversations with their passengers. What is the difference between aggressive driving and road rage? Aggressive driving is the act of operating a car in a selfish, bold, or pushy manner without regard for the rights or safety of others. Road rage is operating a motor vehicle with the intent of doing harm to others or physically assaulting a driver or their vehicle. What should you do when confronted with an aggressive driver? Get out of his way. Put your pride in the back seat. Don't challenge him by speeding up. Avoid eye contact. Ignore gestures. And refuse to react to him. Report aggressive drivers to the authorities. What are some things you can do to reduce your stress before and while you drive? Listen to easy listening music. Give the drive your full attention. Be realistic about your travel time. If you're going to be later than expected, deal with it. Give other drivers the benefit of the doubt. Slow down and keep your following distance reasonable. Don't drive too slowly in the left lane of traffic. Avoid gestures. Be a cautious and courteous driver. You should use your low beams whenever you can. True or false? False. Use high beams when you can. Some drivers make the mistake of always using low beams. This can seriously cut down on their ability to see ahead. Use high beams when it is safe and legal to do so. Use them when you are not within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. What should you do before you drive if you are drowsy? If you are drowsy, sleep before you drive. Even a nap can save your life or the lives of others.
What effects can wet breaks cause? How can you avoid these problems? When driving in heavy rain or deep standing water, your brakes will get wet. Water in the brakes can cause the brakes to be weak, to apply unevenly, or to grab. This can cause lack of braking power, wheel lockups, pulling to one side or the other, and jackknife if you pull a trailer. Avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water, if possible. If not, you should slow down. Place the transmission in low gear and gently put on your brakes. This presses linings against brake drums or discs and keeps mud, silt, sand, and water from getting in. Increase engine RPMs and cross the water while keeping light pressure on the brakes. When out of water, maintain light pressure on the brakes for a short distance to heat them up and dry them out. Make a test stop when safe to do so. Check behind to make sure no one is following and then apply the brakes to be sure they work well. If not, dry them out further as described above. Caution. Do not apply too much brake pressure and depress the accelerator at the same time, or you can overheat the brake drums and lining. You should let air out of hot tires so the pressure goes back to normal. True or false? False. Air pressure increases with temperature. Do not let air out, or the pressure will be too low when the tires cool off. If a tire is too hot to touch, remain stopped until the tire cools off. Otherwise, the tire may blow out or catch fire. Can you safely remove the radiator cap as long as the engine isn't overheated? What constitutes an overheated engine? What if the engine hasn't overheated but is just hot? The CDL manual states, never remove the radiator cap or any part of the pressurized system until the system has cooled. Steam and boiling water can spray under pressure and cause severe burns. If you can touch the radiator cap with your bare hand, it is probably cool enough to open. What factors determine your selection of a safe speed when going down a long, steep downgrade. Your most important consideration is to select a speed that is not too fast for the total weight of your vehicle and cargo, the length of the grade, the steepness of the grade, the road conditions, and the weather. Why should you be in the proper gear before starting down a hill? You want to be in the proper gear before going down a hill because if you try to shift gears, when you are driving on the downgrade, you might get locked out of engaging any gear and will lose all engine braking capability.
Describe the proper braking technique when going down a long, steep downgrade. The use of brakes on a long or steep downgrade is only a supplement to the braking effect of the engine. Once the vehicle is in the proper low gear, the following are the proper braking techniques. Apply the brakes just hard enough to feel a definite slowdown. When your speed has been reduced to approximately 5 miles per hour below your safe speed, release the brakes. This brake application should last for about 3 seconds. When your speed has increased to your safe speed, repeat steps 1 and 2. For example, if your speed is 40 miles per hour, you would not apply the brakes until your speed reached 40 miles per hour. You apply, pardon me, you now apply the brakes hard enough to gradually reduce your speed to 35 miles per hour and then release the brakes. Repeat this as often as necessary until you have reached the end of the downgrade. What type of vehicle can get stuck on a railroad highway crossing? Be aware, these trailers can get stuck on raised crossings, low-slung units, low boy, car carrier, moving van, possum belly livestock trailer, single axle tractor pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate the, pardon me, set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor. How long does it take for a typical tractor trailer unit to clear a double track? It takes a typical tractor trailer unit at least 14 seconds to clear a single track and more than 15 seconds to clear a double track. Stopping is not always the safest thing to do in an emergency. True or false? True. Stopping is not always the safest thing to do in an emergency. When you don't have enough room to stop, you may have to steer away from what's ahead. Remember, you can almost always turn to miss an obstacle more quickly than you can stop. However, top-heavy vehicles and tractors with multiple trailers may flip over. What are some advantages to going right instead of left around an obstacle? If an oncoming driver has drifted into your lane, a move to your right is best. If that driver realizes what has happened, the natural response will be to return to his own lane. If the shoulder is clear, going right may be best. No one is likely to be driving on the shoulder but someone may be passing you on the left. You will know if you have been using your mirrors. If you are blocked on both sides, a move to the right may be best. At least you won't force anyone into an opposing traffic lane and a possible head-on collision.
What is an escape ramp? Escape ramps have been built on many steep mountain downgrades. Escape ramps are made to stop runaway vehicles safely without injuring drivers and passengers. Escape ramps use a long bed of loose, soft material to slow a runaway vehicle, sometimes in combination with an upgrade. If a tire blows out, you should put the brakes on hard to stop quickly. True or false? False. Stay off the brakes. It's natural to want to brake in an emergency. However, braking when a tire has failed can cause loss of control. Unless you're about to run into something, stay off the brakes until the vehicle has slowed down. Then brake very gently, pull off the road, and stop. How do you know if your vehicle has anti-lock brakes? Tractors, trucks, and buses will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the instrument panel. Trailers will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the left side, either on the front or rear corner. What is the proper braking technique when driving a vehicle with anti-lock brakes? Brake the same way, regardless of whether you have ABS on the bus, tractor, the trailer, or both. How do anti-lock brakes help you? Brake pressure is adjusted to provide the maximum braking without danger of lockup. ABS works far faster than the driver can respond to potential wheel lockup. At all other times, the brake system will operate normally. What are some things to do at an accident scene to prevent another accident? Protect the area. Notify authorities. And care for the injured. Name two causes of tire fires. Underinflated tires and duels that touch. What kinds of fires is a BC extinguisher not good for? Wood, paper, and ordinary combustibles. Fires in combustible metals. Note, B extinguishers are for use on fires involving gasoline, oil, grease, or other greasy liquids. And C extinguishers are for use on electrical equipment fires. When using your extinguisher, should you get as close as possible to the fire? No. You should stay as far away as possible. Name some causes of vehicle fires. Build fuel. Improper use of flares, flammable cargo.
Common medicines for colds can make you sleepy. True or false? True. Avoid medication. Many medicines can make you sleepy. Those that do have a label warning against operating vehicles or machinery. The most common medicine of this type is the ordinary cold pill. If you have to drive with a cold, you are better off suffering from the cold than from the effects of the medicine. Coffee and a little fresh air will help a drinker sober up. True or false? False. The liver can only process one-third of an ounce of alcohol per hour, which is considerably less than the alcohol in a standard drink. This is a fixed rate, so only time, not black coffee or a cold shower, will sober you up. What is a hazardous material placard? Placards are signs put on the outside of a vehicle that identify the hazardous class of the cargo. A placard vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put in front, rear, and both sides. Placards must be readable from all four directions. Why are placards used? The intent of the rule is to contain the product, communicate the risk, and ensure safe drivers and equipment.